Hey guys, Greg Street. I'm one of the designers in League of Legends. Back to answer more questions about our development philosophy and how we think about League and why we do some of the crazy things that we do. So we're, um, we're out of preseason now, and a question a lot of you uh, asked us was about rate of change and how much change does League need, and do we change the game too much or too fast, which is all super relevant and the kind of stuff you know, we talk about all the time. So let me dig into that a little bit. So going way back, like way before my time to the genesis of, of League of Legends, um, Mark Merrill and Brandon Beck were talking about the kind of games they like to play and how frustrated they got playing a, a competitive game, because that's the kind of games they play, um, when the game would stop being updated. Like, the development team probably knew there was an exploit, or not even an exploit, just like a strategy that always trumps the other strategies, and it felt like, Everyone is using this, the developers probably know about it, why don't they fix it? And so they really wanted the game they made, which ultimately became League of Legends, to be a game that was, that was curated, that was something we constantly looked at and updated. And if there was a, a pain point or a frustration or a strategy that couldn't be beat or a strategy that was all anyone used, Riot would step in and try to fix that so that players didn't have to go too long. Um, we know a lot, of, a lot of you guys play League, you know, Maybe every day, maybe several times a day. And so even though we do try to patch on a, you know, a two-week cadence, that could feel like a long time when there's like a champ in the game that's really frustrating to deal with. So overall, that leads to our philosophy of let's get in there and fix the stuff that's broken. A lot of the changes we do are of this level of, of um, fixing broken stuff slash maintenance slash updating. Um, to use a really simple example, our live balance patches, patch notes are trying to get at the, you know, Camille came out a little bit strong. It's always a challenge launching a new champion to get the balance just right. Um, some of our champions lately have been a little weak. She was a little strong, and so we, we adjust some of the numbers, hopefully to get um, it to be a little less frustrating to play against her and make her not 100% ban. At the opposite end of the spectrum is something like our Summoner's Rift update that we did a couple of years ago. Um, the map wasn't necessarily broken, but it was definitely feeling old and creaky and something that maybe was getting in the way of, of, of enjoyment. So um, had our artists work on a fantastic update that has been overall really well received and makes the, you know, brings the game a little more into the modern age. Um, we're doing the same thing with a league client right now, just updating an older system into something that'll give us the potential to do cooler stuff and have a game that feels a little newer for you guys as well. A thing we look at a lot are system problems where it feels like the game is supposed to offer you a choice, but there's not really a choice. And a great example of that are item builds. Um, a lot of the work we've done in the roster updates for things like the, you know, the older mage update was trying to make it so that players didn't feel like they just have to buy the same old items every time. At the very least, when you switch champions, Maybe you can have a different build order, and if we're, you know, really deliver on it, then sometimes, depending on the situation of that game, you may pick different items. Maybe you need a tankier build, maybe you need more magic resistance, um, maybe you need an earlier power spike. All that is the kind of stuff, the reason we go in and change items and add new items is to try to add more interesting choices to players and solve some of these really fixed build order problems. Now, that's not to say that every change we make is out there to solve a problem. We do add, make some changes that are just to add freshness. Um, I really want to make this distinction because most of the changes we do aren't for that reason. Most of the changes are, are trying to solve specific problems. We really try to stay away from, from tinkering. Um, League is a game about mastering, getting better at the game. And that can be really frustrating when you feel like the developers are just out there kind of shaking the table all the time. It's like, why bother investing time to get better when Riot's just going to change things anyway? Um, but I'll mention a couple examples of things we do more or less just to add freshness and add new levels of excitement. Um, the most obvious one is, is new champions. Once in a while, we're adding a champion to try to solve a specific problem, like all junglers play the same could be an argument for why to create someone as kind of wacky and out there as Ivern. Um, but for the most part, we add a lot of champions just because they're cool, maybe they'll be somebody's new main, maybe it's just a fun reason to, to log in and play the game. Um, Another example, a totally different example, are the rotating game modes. Um, they're there, we offer them largely as, as a diversion or a, a, you know, a palate cleanser, if you will, of I've played a lot of SR, maybe I played some really hectic ranked games, and I still want to play League, but I just need a little bit of a break. 
And the reason those game modes only last a week or two is they may not have the depth to stand the test of time, but they're you know, a, a nice temporary diversion or things like that. And finally, I want to like, acknowledge the very real situation that the game evolves even if Riot does nothing. Um, players develop new strategies. They develop new counter strategies to those strategies. Um, champions rise or fall sometimes depending on if a, a pro picked them and did you know, a particularly flashy game with, a, with an odd pick, and suddenly now everyone's trying to use that champion. Um, it, you know, it's honestly a big challenge of this job to figure out when is the community going to solve this on their own, and, and probably they'll solve almost every problem on their own given enough time. When is the community going to solve this quickly enough that it's not frustrating? And when does Riot need to step in because it's starting to feel like, oh, I'm going to see Lee Sin every single game. Yeah, eventually a counter will arise, but I'd rather Riot just get in there and do something now so that you know my Thursday game is still, is still fun to play. So I talked a little bit about why we might make a change and what we were hoping that our changes accomplish in the game. But I definitely want to talk about the fact that there, you know, there risk, there's risk to change, too. There are bad things that we can do if we change the game too much. Um, and I'll kind of break those down into, into three or four categories. First, um, the more the game changes, the harder it is for someone who's taken a break to come back to League. And we know a pretty regular play style is I'm super engaged with League right now, and then maybe you know, another game comes out, I'm playing that for a while, but I go back to League. Um, Hopefully the game is still recognizable at that point. And we know that the more we change, particularly dramatic changes like champion select is totally different, or wards are different, or there's a different dragon model in the game, we know that that creates a burden for returning players to figure out what's going on. Now, I also want to clarify that our first commitment is to you guys who are super active who are playing the game now. We don't want to dumb the game down just for the sake of someone who may or may not come back to League after they've taken a break. We really have to commit to making sure the game is fun for people who are actively enjoying it. Now that said, there are some things we could do to make the game a little easier to return to for someone who's taken a break. Um, first of all, we've talked about how the, you know, the initial onboarding experience of League is one of those things that is outdated and something we desperately do need to improve. And that goes for the returning experience as well. We don't do a lot of explaining like, oh, you've been away from the game for a while. Let me tell you about dragons are totally different now. Let me tell you that this champion, you know, hey, Warwick plays pretty differently than the last game you may have played with Warwick. And I think there are ways to do that that aren't just you know, piles and piles of patch notes. And then also, there are fundamentals of League that we want to stay the same. If you log out today and you don't log back in until 2019, the beginning of the game should still probably start with everyone zoning in to the Nexus, and, every, and the game should probably end with you getting into the enemy base and doing some damage there. Even if the champions change, the items you buy, the way you buy items, all of that could change, but enough of it will still feel like League of Legends. So another cost of, of change is the you know, amount of disruption it can have on players. Um, we do want League to be a competitive game, and that goes from everyone playing ranked all the way up to you know, professional esports. We know that dramatic changes can have a huge impact on players who have spent you know, hundreds of hours perfecting, perfecting certain plays or strategies, and we try to be very sensitive to that. Um, I'm sure a lot of you have realized by now that we um, try to focus the biggest changes to the game in preseason and midseason precisely to kind of minimize that impact as much as possible and give you guys a chance to react to the changes and give us feedback to get things in a good spot before, you know, before things, um, before it really counts. Um, it's also worth pointing out, like I mentioned before, that we want adaptation to some degree to be an important skill for League of Legends because the game is going to change, even if Riot doesn't step in. And it's important that, you know, part, one of the execution is, is very important to being good at League, but so is just being able to shift as the game itself shifts. Some, some amount of that we think is healthy. And then finally, another cost of change is interrupting the mastery curve. League is a game about getting better at better. Every game you play, you learn something and you can see yourself improve, and that's really satisfying. And we know that if we step in too much, particularly if it's, it's very disruptive, that players may just lose that desire to adapt. It's like, why bother trying to solve this problem? Riot's just going to you know, get in and mess with it in a week or two anyway. I've talked about this a little bit already, but what I really want to focus on is how we try to mitigate those risks. Uh, first of all, we aren't just going for incremental changes. Like, 
if a designer has a pitch to make a champion one or 2% better on whatever holistic scale you're measuring with, that's not good enough. We should strive for changes that make the game 10%, 30%, 200% better. Um, that's kind of the scale of you know, how we hold ourselves accountable to making sure we're making changes the game really needs. Now, I know we don't always hit it, and we certainly sometimes break things with, you know, well, with well-meaning changes, but we do have a goal. Um, furthermore, not only do we have a strategy, but we try to have follow-up too. Even the best, well-thought-of, beautiful designs sometimes don't stand a chance once they get out there into the hands of millions of players. So we realize, wow, we thought this was going to work, but we now have evidence that it doesn't, and we need to follow up. Um, that's where the two-patch to the two-week patch cycle can really help because then if we overshoot or we miss or the idea was just terrible, we do have an opportunity to back it up before things kind of go on you know, too long and, and maybe get worse and worse. So kind of um, in conclusion, I talked about how we think about change and then I talked about some of the risks of change and how we try to mitigate those risks. But one of the points I originally posed was how much change is too much? And there isn't like a super simple answer to that, except to say it's, it's an ongoing discussion. Um, for example, I've learned that as a developer, I am fairly risk tolerant. And the fact that we have the opportunity to follow up with patches makes, it, makes me feel a little safer with trying something that we have confidence in, but we don't 100% know what's gonna happen. But by contrast, um, Brandon Beck will raise the question of, are we changing too much at once? Are we making it hard for a player who doesn't study every single patch note to really keep up with what's going on in the game? And are we making it you know, certainly hard for someone who, who hasn't been you know, actively playing League lately to keep up with everything that's going on? And my point is not that you know, this is my call to make or this is Brandon's call to make, more that we talk about this kind of thing all the time and I don't think there's a, there's a right answer. We have to keep challenging ourselves to figure out what makes the most sense for, for you guys and for League overall. Um, we do make the, the, the designers or anyone making a change kind of make a case for why that change is important and how they'll follow up if it doesn't work out. But honestly, this is one of those points where I would love to bring players into the discussion a little more. Um, we'd love to hear from you, like, are we changing things too quickly or do you think that we let stuff go too long sometimes before we, before we step in? So please let us know. Um, so that was a really long discussion. Um, thanks so much for, for sticking with me up until now. Really look forward to, to, to reading your thoughts on this topic. Thank you.